Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson, and we're all the way to chapter 7, week 7 of 9. Uh, we're almost there. Uh, I'm sure you're all glad. So chapter 7, we discuss how are uh, relevant revenues and costs used to make decisions. And like I say, every single chapter, managerial accounting is all about making decisions or gathering information appropriate financial information in order to make decisions. So you want to describe the format used for a differential analysis. Well, when you look at, di at a differential analysis, you have option A and option B. What are the different, um, you know, revenues and costs that would change if I choose option A over option B or option B over option A? Now, we will, we will run into scenarios in which uh, option A and option B, there'll be certain uh, fixed costs that are not allocated costs that will will stay there no matter what we do but uh, you know I'll leave that to some of the other examples throughout the presentation so what is differential analysis differential revenues and costs represent the difference in revenues and costs between alternative courses of action well if a cost is retained so let's just say I have a three-year contract and I'm gonna be working there no matter what and there's another manager that can be laid off that manager, the differential cost is $50,000 because they can be laid off. But I have a three-year contract, and my $50,000 is going to remain a cost. So that's not something that you can remove. Uh, one of the examples that they give in the book is a school that they thought, if we if we close the school down, we'll save money. But what they realize is, is that if we close the school down, we have to reassign these teachers to other schools. So we're really not going to save that much money on uh, on salary as we thought. Uh, differential revenues and costs are also called incremental revenues and costs. They're used to make the following types of decisions. Make or buy products, right? So are we going to outsource or are we going to make the products ourselves? Uh, keep or drop product lines. So I have a barbecue line and the old charcoal is just not selling as much these days. Uh, am I going to drop that line and continue to just do uh, propane and gas? Uh, keep or drop customers. Sometimes customers are, are not the best or most profitable customers to have. So maybe I'm going to uh, initiate a process to drop that customer. And also accept or reject special custom orders. Uh, should I accept this order uh, from the client or should I reject it? Or uh, we have to look at certain things that are, are not quantitative, but they're qualitative. Should I accept this order because I know that I'm going to, to get additional orders from this client uh, further down the line? So what is the format used to perform a differential analysis? It's a pretty straightforward format. Uh, the following format is used uh, for Phillips accountancy decisions, whether to keep or drop unprofitable customers. And these are things, I, I know drop a customer may sound uh, kind of harsh, but in business, these are decisions that, that have to be made. So if you look here, and you see alternative one is to keep all of our customers and and one don't make a, you know an assumption from the very beginning on which one or which way the numbers are going to tell us to to go but what we should always know is that we should go where the numbers tell us to go if the numbers say keep the customer we keep the customer if the numbers say drop the customer we drop the customer unless of course there's a qualitative reason to keep that customer because they continue to refer a business like in the case of a, of a CPA referring a business over and over so you have a couple unprofitable clients but you continue to get very profitable clients from there so alternative one if you go down that line keep all customers sales revenue seven million dollars variable cost is five million two hundred fifty thousand so your contribution margin is one million seven hundred fifty thousand so fixed cost is four hundred fifty thousand so the profit if you keep all customers is one million three hundred thousand and you will see that these align with uh, the examples in the book alternative two is to drop the unprofitable customer so the sales revenue ends up being less of course uh, it, goes down to six million the variable cost also ends up being less because now you don't have that customer and you have less cost so it's four million five hundred thousand so the contribution margin is going to be lower than in alternative one it, it goes down to one million five hundred thousand fixed cost is now going to only be a hundred eighty thousand which is much lower than four hundred fifty thousand and now our, our our total profit is going to be one million three hundred and twenty thousand What's our, our, our solution to the problem? Do we drop this customer? Yes, we drop that unprofitable customer. But if you look over here on our differential uh, amount, right, you see that it's a, a million dollars, right? Alternative one is higher. 
right? Alternative one is higher in all those places, and the profit is lower. So if the profit's lower to keep all the customers, then we're going to go with drop that unprofitable customer. So you want to use a differential analysis for make or buy decisions, right? With our snowboards, are we going to make the, the snowboard in-house or are we going to buy the snowboard uh, from an outsourced vendor? So what is a make or buy decision? A company is deciding whether to make a product internally or buy the product from an outside firm. Uh, buying the product from an outside firm is called outsourcing. Now remember, and I, I tell, I, you know, I teach this in a lot of other classes, outsourcing does not necessarily mean that it's in another country. It doesn't have to be in India, China, or the Philippines. It could just be someone over in the, um, uh, in the city of, um, of Orange, and, and they're going to make the snowboards and then send them off to you. So the differential analysis can be used to analyze make or buy decisions. So how is differential analysis used for make or buy decisions? First, you have to calculate the cost associated with making the product internally, right? So we have to know and understand how much does it make for us to create our snowboard in-house. Alternative one, or buying the product from another source, which is alternative two. Then you calculate the differential amounts between the two alternatives, and that's when you get your real answer. Because it sounds all good to say, oh, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and outsource this, and these are the costs that we're going to save. But it's quite possible that some of, these, uh, some of these costs will be retained, and you will not be able to alleviate the company of all of the costs. Lastly, choose the alternative with the lowest cost, right? And that's, that's what we should do. So here are the example of a maker by differential analysis for best boards. So alternative one, make internally. So if you want to make them internally, cost to buy for outside is obviously going to be zero. The direct materials, because we're going to make them at our facility, direct materials is 300000 direct labor is 160000 and manufacturing overhead is 100000 right? So these are going to remain. And obviously when we go to alternative two, those things are, are going to be non-existent. Uh, so our fixed cost factory equipment lease is 110,000. The building rent is 290,000. Production supervisor salary is 140,000. So our total production cost is 1,100,000. So alternative two, we want to buy from the outside. So the big difference we see is that cost to buy from outside is zero in alternative one, and then it is 700,000 in alternative two. Other big difference is the fact that direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead are non-existent here in our alternative to buy from the outside. And that makes sense because we don't have to buy direct materials. We don't have to hire people or pay them to do this uh, process or complete this process. And we don't have to pay manufacturing overhead, right? So just at a glance for right now, you see that you're spending 700000 versus uh, what you formerly spent in these areas, which is 300, 400, 560,000, right? So right now, if you just said, let's stop right here, then you're going with alternative one. But you obviously have to you know, continue on. But here's the big difference maker. Uh, these costs down here, some of these costs remain. So that 110,000 for the factory equipment lease, that remains. And that uh, 290000 for the factory building uh, rent, that remains as well. So you're not going to get rid of these costs, right? Uh, that 90000 uh, is is going to be a, a reduction because you're going to uh, a lay off a production supervisor and his salary is 50000 But another production supervisor, his salary is 90000 and he has a long-term contract, so you can't get rid of that. So total production costs. It costs you $1,100,000 if you want to make them internally. And it costs you $1,190,000 if you want to buy them from the outside. So if I'm someone who comes to this with this idea to the president, the president asks the accountant to check it out, the accountant has to come back and say, no, this is not a viable decision because we're going to lose $90,000. And the person who came up with the idea it, it should probably be grateful that they shoot down this decision because if you lose $90,000, that individual will probably lose their job. So what does the alternative format look like for the maker by decisions at Best Boards Inc? Some managers prefer a more concise presentation. Uh, the following format shows uh, only shows the differential amount. So sometimes people want to kind of get into the details. I know they say, hey, the devil's in the details, but you don't always, uh, especially upper management, they don't always want the details uh, at the very beginning when they want to make that make or buy decision. They want to simply look at a, a graph or a chart that says, hey, this is what we need to do. 
So here's the result. And we already came up with the result. We already know what the answer is, but here it is in a different format. Cost increased to buy from the outside. Uh, that would be seven hundred thousand uh, dollars if we, you know, bought them from, you know, the outsourced vendor. Direct materials cost savings. We will save three hundred thousand dollars. Direct labor cost saving. Uh, we will save one hundred sixty thousand on what we would pay individuals as far as their wages go. And we'll also save hundred thousand on manufacturing overhead. Uh, supervisor salaries cost saving is going to be fifty thousand because we're going to let one of the supervisors go. But if you remember, we have to keep that other supervisor. So the cost increase from outsourcing is ninety thousand dollars. Are we going to go with that decision? Absolutely not. So what is what are the key points associated with differential analysis? Differential analysis requires identification of all revenues and costs that differ from one alternative to another. Right? Well, you saw back here. If you're looking at differential analysis, you're now dealing with this 140,000 uh, production supervisor salary versus that $90,000. These two, there's no differential because they're exactly the same. These three, there's a differential because you have 300,000, 160,000, and 100,000 versus zero. Those are differential analysis. But if it's the same, this 110 and this 290, they don't count in differential analysis because those are costs that will remain. Uh, managers typically select the alternative with the highest level of profit, but let's say that's not an option. If there's only differences uh, between the alternatives uh, are, are with costs, as with the make or buy decision, uh, decision makers uh, typically uh, select the alternatives uh, with the lowest cost. So you want to use differential analysis for uh, product line decisions, right? You, you, Companies have to go through this all the time. This, you have one product line. You have to reduce how many are created or how many are made and how many you think are going to be sold. Right? I don't think there are too many. Uh, the iPod, remember the, the small iPod you know, with the little button that you rotate around like that? Uh, I don't think that they're selling too many of those uh, right now. Uh, but obviously they were selling, when that was the best technology at the time, they were selling a lot more. So you have to change your, your product line from time to time and actually be very fluid in regards to changing your product line and making those decisions. So what is a product line decision? A product line decision, uh, a product line decision is a group product line, uh, is a group of related products. Uh, as a product near the end of their life cycle, Managers must decide whether to keep or drop the product line. Uh, you know, you look at a, a phone. Uh, hopefully, nobody still has a, a flip razor phone. But uh, you know, back in the day, those those were styling. That was the phone. But you come towards the end of that that you know product life cycle, you have to say, you know, what, we're not going to produce these anymore. Uh, companies must continually assess whether to discontinue current product lines. So what are direct fixed costs and allocated fixed costs? Well, I'll tell you right now before we even get into the details of it, uh, those direct fixed costs, they're direct. They're there. They're assigned to it. There's no getting around it. Allocated fixed costs, uh, they're you know allocated uh, between the, the different departments. So if I have a product line and I drop that product line and it has this direct fixed cost, that direct fixed cost goes bye-bye with it. But allocated fixed costs, those remain, and that's those. That's the main point that you really have to uh, remember in terms of, of making these these decisions. So direct fixed costs are fixed costs that can be traced directly to a product line, right? So if I have the barbecue charcoal uh, product line has direct fixed costs, those are going to be the ones. Direct fixed costs are typically differential costs, right? Because they're associated with that product. So if that product or that product line, if it goes, then so does that cost. Allocated fixed costs, also called common fixed costs, are fixed costs that cannot be directly traced to a product line and therefore are assigned to the product lines using an allocation process. So that means if 90000 is assigned to charcoal and I say, you know what, disband, no more charcoal product, then that 90000 is going to be split between the other two uh, product lines, probably uh, 45000 45000 if it's a 50-50 split. Uh, allocated fixed costs are typically not differential costs, meaning they're going to stay there. They're going to remain. And that is the key point that you have to remember when you're making these calculations. So how is a differential analysis used for product line decisions? Assume barbecue company has three product lines, gas barbecues, charcoal barbecues, and barbecue accessories, right? So put that in your mind. Um, the company is deciding whether to keep or drop the charcoal barbecues product line. So just like we learned, we're going to actually put this into play and decide should we keep this line or should we go ahead and get rid of it. You will continue to learn more in uh, the chapter 7 uh, part 2 of the lecture.